Hello and welcome to another Battle Games in Middle Earth painting tutorial. This time we're putting some paint on one of the oldest miniatures in the Lord of the Rings range, a Numanumanorian. Now there are so many of these Gondorian warriors who've been painted since the early 2000s, it's hard to make them new Minorian as opposed to old Minorian, but hopefully this guide helps. I start with a 50-50 mix of Storm Vermin Fur and Abaddon Black. I paint it pretty much everywhere, shield, material and cloak. Don't worry about getting it anywhere else though, we'll obviously paint over that later on in the process. Next I watered down Cadian Flesh Tone to make sure it's a little runny but not too watery and then painted that on the face and hands. I think the guys are meant to be wearing gloves but to be honest it's next to impossible to tell and it's handy to provide more colour to what is going to be quite a monochrome model. You can see I make some mistakes painting this, I get a little bit on the helmet, no sniggering in the back there, but dab that off and just carry on. Moving on to the metal now, with lead belcher I dry brush the chainmail under the cloth and gently stroke his helmet, and paint the greaves and the army armour. Go with a fairly thin layer here to avoid obscuring detail because we'll wash all this later and we want some detail left for the wash to pool into. Also I paint the edges of the shield, the top and the bottom have a nice embossed edge. It's worth noting this would definitely be better if you don't glue the shield on before you do it, but these were old rescued plastics with the shields glued on already, so I just make do with what I have, and to be fair they were way cheaper this way, so win win. I also paint the sword in full with this as well, but we'll come back to the handle once we get a grip on the rest of the details. Get a grip! See what I did there? Now Scorch Brown or Rhinox Hide with a slightly disturbing hair hanging off it. Ugh. I struggle to paint the back of the shield, which would be easier if it's not glued on, and I paint the hair and the belt across the strapping lad. Strapping. Once that's dry, crack on with a wash of Devlan Mud or Agrax Earthshade. Milne oil will do the job, but the brown works better to shade the skin and give the metal a grubby look, which Numenorians definitely have in the Last Alliance bits of the films. Now you can see it looks suitably shady and grubby, we can go back to restoring the original colours on the model. So using a fine detail brush I highlight the cloth carefully with Storm Vermin Fur. I'm actually painting the top layer and the under layer of cloth, but don't bother with the under layer at the moment really, I'm going to go back to it later on to brighten things up. When doing the shield I try and leave plenty of space around the detail as well, it adds shadow to the model and helps mean those details will be more consistent later and stand out from the background more. The cloak is a lovely bit to paint, the folds are so neat making for very easy highlighting. With Doomble Brown I go back to the shield, I paint the edges in brown here, but I think I decide later to return them to the dark colour of the front of it, but either will do, as long as you're consistent. I also get into the crevice behind the shield there too, start dry brushing the hair before deciding I've done a poor job and just paint it Doomble entirely. Now to start detailing this fella, I start using Administratum Grey on anywhere which will end up white. So we want the tree and the detail on the shield, uh, the contrast helps us with seeing those stones, seeing the stones, seeing stones. Then I work to make sure all of the materials trim is done in the light grey too. You can go straight onto it with white, but then it may need two layers to look good anyway, so safer to do it light grey first, and then you can still leave some lighter grey as shading for the white if you wish. Now with Gorthor Brown I highlight basically all of the brown areas, some I missed the base layer on earlier like the belt, but I leave it black as a shade anyway, it just means that they're the same highlight with subtle differences in the base colour. In other words, I was lazy and got lucky that it ended up working. 
The trickiest bit is definitely painting on wood grain, which I'll admit is a very loose term. I paint this on the back of the shield, and I found even painting basic vertical lines on backs of shields can add a little depth and detail, especially when seen at a normal tabletop distance. Given extra time, the right paint consistency, no camera in the way, and no shield glued on, it can look awesome. But I suppose you'll just have to take my word on it this time. It doesn't look terrible though. Then, with Retributor Gold, I highlight the edges of the helmet and the wings hammered onto the side of his head. Also, I give him a gold buckle and handle on the sword. For captains or heroes, I may consider highlighting those gold bits again in something brighter, maybe a silver of some sort, but for rank and file girls, it's just not worth it for me. Let's head back to those fine details which really make this guy pop now then. With white I go back over all of the details on the shield again and be very careful here because it's really easy to get cocky now you've painted these things once. Leave plenty of the darker greys or I suppose light greys showing underneath the white. You can lightly dry brush it into some of the details but to be honest it will work better if you do it really carefully and just paint exactly onto those lines of the tree and the branches on that white tree. Then just do the same with the edgings on the guy's shirt. Now with Iron Breaker or Chain Mail, I return to the armour. If I'm honest, I'm not sure I'd always bother with this, especially for rank and file troops, but it is genuinely worth it. It really brightens the whole thing up and makes it stand out so much compared to the dark greys and white, even though really it, I'm painting it shiny grey on a mostly grey model. But still, it does work. Here I come back to the material undergarments I mentioned earlier that made me blue in the face. I painted them grey originally, but I reckon they need a little bit more colour. So in the same style as my Minas Tirith warriors I painted years ago, which you can see an old tutorial for on this channel, I used a bit of Macrag blue, just to make it pop a bit. Using a bit of white mixed straight into it after I'd done that initial layer, I continued seamlessly. Seam? Less seam? on the seams of the... anyway, and highlighted it with that white and blue mix. It's not much, but it does add a tiny splash of colour into the mix on what is essentially a very grey model. Now I paint the shoes in pure Abaddon black, which seem to come out nice and shiny usually. Then I touch up a few details I missed, like making the central palantir golden and neatening up some leather straps. Now I finally end on Kislev flesh on the face and fingers just to brighten them up and pick out key features like the knuckles and the nose and chin. Finish it all off by basing him, I just dry brushed the black sand, grey and then stuck a winter tuft from Army Painter on there before splodging on some bicarb of soda mixed with PVA glue to make a nice little snowy base. I can't think of the logic behind it, maybe they're travelling over the mountains and it's really snowy, who knows. But anyway, there you go, Numa Numa Norian, done and dusted. If you've enjoyed this, take a look at my other videos, there's bat reps, a lot of live streamed SBG content you can catch up on, and if you want to win prizes and get freebies, head to patreon.com slash battlegamesinmiddleearth and sign up there. Until next time, thanks for watching.